So you know how to get a sprite pointing in the direction of another one. Easy peasy, right? But do you know how to do it using trigonometry? If not, that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. We're going to be building an enemy turret so it can eventually fire some missiles at our rocket ship to make its life that little bit more difficult. We'll be revisiting ATAN in the process. And what's more, so I'm going to share with you an advanced animation technique called blending, and it's going to make our tracking motion of the turret look super realistic. So let's get this moving in just a sec. Hey, what's up crew? It's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer, and I help curious people just like you along on their learning journeys through video tutorials. If you just jump into this tutorial, check out the starter project down the bottom or the cards in the top right hand corner right now. We've got our spaceship flying around the screen and we need to create an enemy for it. For the enemy, we're going to create a turret. We're going to paint a sprite, select the circle tool, hold down the shift key on your keyboard to draw a nice even circle. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, grab the arrow selection tool, drag it down to the center. There you go, it should snap lock. We're going to change the X and the Y of the turret to 0, 0. And you can see it's quite large, so you might need to resize it. Press the Alt key to keep that nice circly shape going. Get the size that you want. Might need to zoom in a little bit. Gonna copy it, paste it on top, reduce the size, put it back in the center. We're just gonna change the color of it. Let's make it a little bit darker. Cool. Now grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. Now you don't want this to be in the center. You want the left edge of the cannon to be in the center and then try and align the center vertically as well. Okay, that looks a little bit funky on the screen. I'm gonna sandwich the cannon between these two circles just by moving it backwards. There we go. Looks a little bit long, so I'm just going to resize it there. Great. And there's our turret. Now, just rename it to turret. Make sure that your turret is pointing in the west direction, so then when we change the direction of it to zero degrees, it is pointing north. This is to align it with our rocket ship's direction. Just in the code box of the turret now, when you initialize it, click the green flag, set the X and Y position, and just get it to point in the direction of zero and grab out a forever loop. When we move our spaceship around the screen, we want our turret to point in its direction. And there's a really easy block to do that. Motion blocks point in direction of the rocket ship. So now when we move the ship around the screen, the turret is directly pointing it. But that's the easy way, and you're not here for the easy way. You're here to learn about trigonometry and some advanced animation effects. So let's go explore that. I'd like you to make a new block and call it rotate turret. Instead of point towards, you want to rotate turret, and we can get rid of that point towards. Now, we're gonna be using a couple of variables to help us out with this. So create a variable, call it target angle. Grab out a set variable block and change it to target angle. Now I'm just back over here in the rocket ship sprite, and we can use the same A10 function that we used in the previous tutorial for our turret. So I'm just gonna grab our logic here and place it directly on the turret. Now I'm back inside the turret sprite, and there is our block of code. For an explanation of how this works, check out the card in the top right hand corner right now. However, we need to modify it. So instead of the X and Y velocity, we need the X and Y position of the rocket ship. The reason is because we're gonna be drawing a triangle from the turret to the position of the ship. So this point is the X and Y of the ship. In the sensing category, drop down the reporter block with two drop down menus. We're looking at the rocket ship. We want the X position of the rocket ship. We also want the Y position of the rocket ship. Where it says X velocity, put in the X position. Where it says Y velocity, put in the Y position. And that's what the block looks like. Now insert that whole code block into the variable. Now we want to point in the direction of that target angle. Now when we move our ship around the screen, our turret is mimicking that point in direction block. Boom. But currently our turret is like fixed to our rocket ship. That's not what would happen in real life. It would be lagging a little bit behind it. So if you're looking for a challenge, I'll show you how to do that. First things first, I'm going to clear off all these variables on the screen and leave the one that has target angle. There we go. Currently we're pointing in the direction immediately of the target angle. We want something like a lagging angle. So go ahead and create a variable called lagging angle. And we're going to be setting the lagging angle. I'm going to jump across the sketchbook now to give you some visual intuition of how this works. Over here in sketchbook, we've got our X axis going across. We've got our Y axis going up and down. We've also got our turret and our spaceship. We've also got a little test angle that we've got here. And this green line, that's referring to our variable of our target angle. And we're just gonna make our target angle 100 degrees. That's represented here by our little yellow circle segment. You can see our turret is currently pointing north and that is at zero degrees. And this pinkish line, it refers to our lagging angle. And our lagging angle is currently zero degrees. We want our lagging angle to do something like you're seeing on the screen right now. So starting off with quite big movements and then those angle movements reducing in size until we land at 100 degrees. To help us do this, we're going to be leveraging the power of percentages. To help us visualize this, I've just got a percentage bar starting at zero degrees going all the way up to 100. We're just going to piggyback the values on the x-axis to help us out. All right, our turret is at zero degrees and let's think about this little segment here first. 
we know that it's a slice of a full 100 degree rotation. So why don't we just make an arbitrary number and say this is a 10% slice of the current target angle. To get the 10% of the target angle in Scratch, we just need to get that target angle and multiply it by 1 tenth, and that's gonna come out to 10. Here in our percentage bar, 10 is just equal to here. So we're saying when x is equal to 10, that just means 10 degrees. So I'm gonna color in that segment to represent 10% of our target angle. Now we could repeat this for 10 times until our laggy angle is equal to 100 degrees. So we'd have 10 slices of animation but notice how they're all the same width. And here the widths get smaller and smaller. So this is just part of our solution to set the lagging angle. This 10% is gonna be the same every single time. But look, we've got this whole 90% to play with now. And we know if this little segment here is 10 degrees, well the rest of this is going to be 90 degrees because 10 plus 90 is equal to 100. So now we know that 10% of the target angle is just equal to this segment right here. 10 degrees. So we'll just erase this out now. We know that 10% plus 90% is equal to 100%. So we're going to leverage that. We're going to take out 10% and we're going to add it to something that's going to be 90%, which is just 9 tenths. And the thing that we're going to take 90% of is the current value of the lagging angle. So we can just take 90% of the current value of lagging angle. And in Scratch, that's going to look like this. This is probably not making a whole lot of sense yet, but let's step through each of these segments and see what the values would be. Let's start when lagging value is equal to zero degrees. Down here, lagging value, which is zero degrees times 0.9, well, that's just going to equal zero. And zero plus 10% of the target angle, we know to start with, it's just going to be 10%. That's always going to be 10% for a 100 degree angle. So this first segment refers to lagging value's first value of 10. Okay, so let's work out this second segment now. So the current value of lagging value, well, that's now 10, isn't it? Because this is what the current value is. We want to take 90% of it. So we just multiply it by 0.9, and that's going to come out to 9. And just to show you that on the calculator, 10 times 0 0.9 is equal to 9. And we know that this business down here is always going to be equal to 10. So this is just 10 plus 9. So our second value is going to be 19. And see how we've only added 9, we haven't added 10. To show that on our percentage bar down here, I'm just going to draw a line that is just a little bit before 20. And I've just colored that in. We know that's 9 degrees because 10 plus 9 is 19. Okay, let's do one more and we're going to look at this segment here. Remember, this line is referring to this whole rotation now. So the current value is 19. So we want 19 times 0 0.9, going to need the calculator for that one, is equal to 17.1. And again, we take our 10 and we add it to 17.1 can certainly do that one. Now we're at 27.1 degrees. And notice that each time we're adding a little bit less. 27 on our percentage bar is somewhere around here. And now I'm just gonna color that in. And this segment is equal to 8.1 degrees. And when we add them all together, we're at 27.1 degrees. Now this will just continue until lagging angle becomes the same as the target angle. What will those values be? Well, what's 100 times 0.9 or 90% of 100? Well, that's just 90. And 10 plus 90 is equal to 100 degrees. And so down here, this is our final block that we'll use in Scratch. So let's head there now. Let's first create our percentages, target angle, get 10% of that. Then let's get 90% of lagging angle. We're gonna add those two together. We're going to stick that inside lagging angle. And instead of pointing in the direction of target angle, we want the lagging angle. So you can see now when we move our ship around the screen, our turret follows it and is just slightly behind it. If you wanted it to be even slower, then you would say lower 10% to 5% of the target angle, and then you'd increase lagging angle to 95%. You have to make sure that these values, the 0.1 and the 9, always add to 1. So everything's all well in our game until our ship moves from north to south and south to north over on the left side of the screen. Something funky really happens with our turret. As I move the rocket from south to north, check out the values of these variables. You can see that it went from a quite a high number to a now a negative number. So what's going on here is that as our spaceship goes from north to south, it's crossing over a border. It's going from negative 90 to 270. And when it does that, it wants to make a full clockwise rotation of 360 degrees, which what happens to our turret. There we go, our turret has just fully rotated. The opposite is true when we go from south to north. We're going from quite a high value of 270 to negative 90 when we cross the border. So we're taking away 360 degrees. Watch what happens to the turret. There we go. The way to solve this is to force the value of lagging angle when we make that cross. To help us out, we're gonna need a new variable. Call it last angle. We're going to set last angle to the target angle directly after we set target angle. So what this will do while we're calculating the next target angle, will know the last angle that it was. So we're creating a boundary between the two known angles. And we can do something like this. If our last angle is greater than 
a number really close to 270, and our target angle is less than a number that's really close to negative 90, but not smaller than it, then we know we've just gone from south to north. And when we do that, we want to take away a full 360 degree rotation from lagging angle. So let's change lagging angle by negative 360. And before we do the other one, let's just test it out. So we're going to take this if block and insert it between where we set the target angle and last angle. Now I'm just going to get our ship headed south again and our turret did its funky little animation. And when we go north, it crosses the boundary beautifully. I just duplicated that if block. And we need to change it a little bit. First thing we can do, the nice easy one, is just take away the negative symbol because we're going to be adding 360 degrees. And we just want to switch these two variables around. Change last angle to target angle. And where it says target angle, change it to last angle. So target angle is now greater than 267 and last angle is less than negative 87. And just for cleanliness, we could switch these out. So when we're north and we're going south, change our lagging angle by 360. Slip that directly under that previous if statement. I'll get rid of these comments and let's test it out. Our rocket ship now moves through that boundary and our turret is animating beautifully. All right, you made it. Well done, congratulations. And good on you for persevering with these tutorials. They're not easy, but you're sticking with it and I know you can do it. So currently our rocket ship can just kind of drive straight through our turret and that's probably not what we want. So we're gonna create a health bar and some damage when we collide with our turret. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of collision detection as well and investigating the sign and cause trig functions. So I'll catch you in that tutorial. Congrats on making it through this tutorial and I hope it bolted your understanding of percentages along the way. We're edging ever so close to the halfway point of this series, but we've still got a whole heap more to get through. If you find some value, then be sure to smash that like button. And hey, I'd love to see how you're getting on with this project. So drop me a comment down in the section below. And if you're feeling up for it, also share a link to your project. I'd love to see how you're tweaking it to your style. But until next time, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.